In this video, we will be discussing flooring for food service kitchens. We're making this video because we know your reputation is on the line when we're talking about the cleanliness of your kitchen. We also know that you have health and safety standards that you have to comply with. Yeah, the kitchens are hard-hitting environments. They take a lot of abuse. They're used every day. They're always wet. Um, so it's really important to have the right floor in there just for the safety of your staff. Absolutely, we get a lot of calls. We get calls daily with people that are looking to change up, do something completely different because what they've always used is not working. Uh, and that would be again going back to tile, going back to um, paints, which is really a big no in the industry, and also rubber flooring. So does it go into weight? Because in an industrial kitchen, you have fridges, freezers, stoves that are hundreds of pounds, maybe even thousands, I guess, I don't know. In my kitchen at home, I don't. So when you think of flooring, you gotta think of big things that can really. For sure, for sure. They have um, also with, uh, I believe it's pizza, pizza kitchens, where they have those big mixers are very, very, very heavy. We've had them, as long as the floor is sound underneath it, our floor has no problem handling it at all. And I think that is probably a big question, especially if you're talking about a second floor with a wood substrate. Um, would it work? There's gonna be some movement there. Fortunately, our floor is able to withstand some movement. It uh, has some flexibility. It's still hard, but it has some flexibility, so it can go over a wood subfloor with something heavy on it. Primarily, the substrate itself would have to be, um, be durable enough, though. Once you got that figured out, the, the epoxy will hold up. Well, it's unlike other epoxy floors, the resin goes all the way through. So you actually have a 100% solid hard piece of 3 16 inch or so a floor that can handle that weight. So you could like a 2,000 pound oven and you can roll it back and forth on there. Absolutely. And your floors will be good. Absolutely. This, this will soak into the substrate and become one with it. You won't have a seam there. But the other thing about it is if you were to try and chip this stuff up, it would be pretty much virtually impossible. Even if you were able to chip it up, you'd probably be taking up some of the substrate with it. So it's a lot different than a floor that's rattling around on the substrate. And it's adhered, yes, but not very well. And this that probably real... goes into like cleaning it. So for Everlast floors, is it easy to clean? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. If it's, in, if it's impervious, all the surface contaminants are sitting on the surface and they haven't absorbed at all. Yeah, so we actually have a cleaner where the grease and stuff that's on the floor and the fats and the sugars and things like that. You put this cleaner on there and, and together with our floor they just beat up and sit on the surface and you just push them down with a squeegee. Nice. So you don't even have to scrub the floor. You just do that every night. And Wipe really, it away. Yeah, and it's, it's actually <laughs> even good for the drains. I see that Everlast has three main things that we all talk about. It's healthy, durable, and attractive. So let's talk about the first one. How is it healthy? A lot of it is because it's sanitary and antimicrobial. So we actually have an antimicrobial component in the floor so that the germs and bacteria and stuff can't grow. And it's seamless. And so because it's seamless, there's no way for stuff to all get in the cracks. And so it's, it's, and also it's easy to clean. So all these three things kind of make it a healthy floor. Absolutely, absolutely. And we get, again, we get calls, ab abundant amount of calls where people are looking to get something that's air very unorthodox as flooring is related. And so we've seen a lot of, we've seen a huge movement this way even into the seamless market and ours being really even unorthodox in the seamless market. Just it, because it does all the things and it does it well. You've got a couple good animations. Uh, let's talk about the first one where that smell is coming up. I, I think I'll let you go on that. <laughs> actually, actually, we've, um, I remember looking just recently, I think it was last year we went into a kitchen that had been done about eight years ago with our floor. And one of the things I noticed is that there is no smell. Um, and I've been into a lot of kitchens. We've done a lot of, we've done a lot of tile. We've seen tile floors and they all have that same kind of perpetual smell. It has a, it's really, it smells unsanitary. I know it's unsanitary. Um, and then also in bathrooms, um, we've had people call back years later and say, we still don't have a smell. And with the other stuff, we had tile on our floors or maybe it was a VCT floor, um, no smells. You know, like a lot of times you walk, I call it the steakhouse smell. You walk oh, into a yes. steakhouse and they always have that unique smell. And that's just the, the fats and things are kind of growing in the floor. Sometimes they put the carpet in the front and it just makes the whole restaurant just, there's the smell. You can get most steakhouses. Absolutely. We don't have our floor. You can identify them just by the smell. I thought that was kind of somewhat normal back in the day because we did remodels on uh, restaurants in the kitchens. They did the tile, traditional tile. 
and there's always that smell, and there's some other stuff too that's very unsanitary. Very. Back when you were a tile setter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we saw saw little little worms crawling through the thin set and everything. Because there's space between the tile, and it's always wet back there. It was very disgusting. This is back before I knew such a great product existed. <laughs> I'm glad that's not the norm anymore. I don't want to see worms in any flooring. Oh, no. So oh, let's go into the next animation where it's slip resistant. I know that's important for the cocktail server, waitresses, just anybody who's going to be working in these industrial kitchens. We get a lot of people that will call us and I, sometimes I almost wonder, not all the time, but there's a fair amount of times where people will call us up and that seems like it's a big proponent, big, big issue for them. And I'm like, that is part of our floor, but we have all these other reasons to pick the floor. Um, yeah, and non-slip is also one of them, but it ends up being a big deal for them because they have slip and falls. And we've heard of people um, that have had um, lawsuits and people that literally have had, um, I guess you call it career-ending injuries. <laughs> They've slipped on the floor, broken bones and stuff like that. And with this right here, even if you do eventually wear off the anti-slip, it's very easy to replace it. It's very inexpensive to replace it. Yeah, and it can be adjusted to the environment. Some kitchens sure have a lot more oil and grease on the floor than sure. others. And so for those, we'd recommend that they have the installer course. put more of that in. Or coarse grit. We've had, we've had yeah, somebody like this coarse grit. a couple different grades of grit too. So they really, we can, the kitchen can be customized to the need and also can be maintained throughout the years by yep. every couple of years, two, three years, if it starts to wear down, just add some more on and it's economical and easy to do. I don't think there's a magic number as far as like when to replace the anti-slip, yeah. obviously when it gets slippery, but we have not had a lot of customers, even counting five or six years, they've had to come back to us. There is a point, I believe, where, where that happens, but... Um, it's but, just part of the general maintenance yeah. of the floor. It's years, fortunately. It's not every year where we run into a lot of companies that have every year they have, uh, this This is a requirement. Unlike tile, so a tile, you wear out that anti-skid, they put a carbide grit in there. Mm -hmm. Once you wear it out, you're done. You can't put more grit on it, at least with ours. Absolutely. You, you, whenever needed, you can add it again pretty much forever. I think you're looking at probably 30 cents a square foot to replace it, and that's, that's pretty inexpensive as far as material goes. Well, we've talked about a couple pretty cool things on the floor so far, but let's talk about the fun stuff. How is it attractive? We have about 42 different colors to choose from, and so it can match just about any decor. Um, you know, here we call this our Everlast Red. It's, it's got some little black chips inside the red. We've got the Cherokee Red, it's just like this, except it's got white. Um, Mexican Sand, we have a lot of different, just about any color, decor you have, we've got the color to match it. We got about 36 more colors than about everybody else, I think. <laughs> So you well, can customize the skid resistance, you can customize the color. You guys can customize your yeah, floors, it's pretty amazing. Much, <laughs> yeah, 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 we've, we've, we've had customers want us to make them a special color before. We even have these recycled glass. So, I don't know if you... Yeah, let me see that. Maybe we could each hold one. Got some re recycled glass colors here. Now we have a lot of different, about eight or so different recycled glass colors and it's again customizable. So people, they want a particular color, they can just call us and we probably have it. If not, we can probably make it. We've done a lot of discussing about the back house. Let's talk about the front house. Do you have anything that would be good for that? We do. Even Everlast floor itself is great for front of house. Sure. Um, it's, it's got all the things you need, easy to clean, it's attractive. But in addition to Everlast floor, we, the pebble stone um, and granite stone samples you know, we, we have here, and you can show that one. And, and uh, we have a pebble stone, which is good for front of house as well as outdoor on porches, which we can talk about outdoor in a minute. Okay. We, have, we have decor floor. Uh, big old lineup of colors to choose from this. Also good for front of house. There's a metallic reflective. Uh, this recycled glass floor that we were talking about, and we can also do it in, in mother of pearl finish. There's just it's really an unlimited. Most places they have a certain decor they want to meet. They want the designers like to do fancy fun things. And so if you have an idea, just let us know. Probably we have it. If not, we probably already have the stuff to make it. And so it is really just limited to your idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a beautiful sparkle and finish into a lot of these. Nice. I think as a woman, I would say it's attractive and probably as a man. <laughs> Absolutely. We've looked at some of the cosmetic beauty of epoxy or Everlast epoxy floors. This has like a metallic to it. Is this the one that everybody's talking about? Yes, it is. There's a lot of companies that actually have a metallic epoxy. The way ours are different, we call it our decor floor line, is it's um, 
it's not a paint. So like if you can see like that how one there, thin, yeah. yeah. You see how thin that is? It's industry yes. standard right there. Yeah, you go online yeah, nice. and go buy it a metallic epoxy floor, this is what you get. Eventually, there's just not enough there. It's eventually gonna chip through. Ours is like 100 times thicker, literally 100 times thicker because it's Easily. not a paint. It's filled with stone, it's troweled on. It just looks like a paint at the top, but it's it's troweled on. There's these paints too that are no good. It's a little... Just an example of crap. <laughs> <laughs> True story. <laughs> See, decor floor won't crack or peel apart like epoxy floor paints. Our flooring is designed to be strong and can withstand even the heaviest foot traffic without showing wear. Yeah, or heavy ovens. <laughs> Absolutely. I think it's important. For the front I, think, of house. I think the traffic pattern thing is important because almost everybody else with these thin mill systems, they're wearing down to the concrete or in some rare cases when it's on plywood on plywood within a relatively short amount of time. So this, this would pretty much forego all of that, this system, the Everlast system. Plus, it's made with a composite material, so unlike tile or vinyl or something, it doesn't need all that periodic re-waxing. That's exactly right, and that's actually important, too. And it can be waxed. This particular floor can be waxed as an option, but it doesn't require it. So this is another one where you just put your solution on it and wipe it away, and it'll yeah. just kind of uh, glob up, yeah. up beat that up. That stuff works, because this is also epoxy, so that works with it as well. So what about uh, outdoor options? Outdoor floors, they have to be resistant to sunlight, they have to be waterproof, so that's why we actually have an Everlast Outdoor Tough, and it, it actually is UV resistant, uh, waterproof, resistant to weather, freeze thaw, so in other words, you can get snowed on and it's still good. It has the ability to flex a little bit, whereas the traditional method, and it's pretty much across the board, everybody has it, either this non-yellowing epoxy floor, which is not truly a non-yellowing, it'll eventually yellow like everything else, Ours is a little bit flexible, it's not rigid. Um, it's also non-yellowing, so five years when your neighbor is completely yellowed and whited out, the, uh, the Everlast looks this, exactly the same, the pebble stone system. Yeah, because the difference is these, what they call epoxy non-yellowing, really there's no such thing as non-yellowing epoxy, they just, they just make it last longer till it can yellow. Whereas ours, Outdoor Tough is not epoxy at all, there's no epoxy in the whole system. It's important. It, it's polyavastic. Yep. instead and so if you do anything outside whether you use Everlast or not you want to make sure you have a polyavastic resin in it because that's the only resin that will actually last outdoors. I ran into a guy that was um, up north I think it was in Ohio he was an installer of the pebble stone and he was doing the traditional method with the non-yellowing epoxy every two years he would have to come back and recoat it or he have to pressure wash it and recoat it to kind of revitalize it bring it back to its natural state and so every spring as guys would go out and that was part of the job um, I, I'd like to be able to offer a product that we won't ever have to do that to. So there's a lot of companies that advertise different resinous floorings for outdoors and say they're waterproof. And that say they're UV resistant. Well, a lot of them are waterproof, but not all of them are UV resistant. Mm -hmm. And the way you can tell if the floor is going to be UV, UV resistant or not is if it's made with a polyavastic resin. If it's any other kind of like a urethane or epoxy, it's probably not UV resistant. But if it's made with an polyavastic, then you know it's good. So it sounds like Everlast has everything covered. Front of the house, back of the house, indoor, outdoor. I mean, if you're gonna choose a floor, it really should be Everlast. Hey guys, if you like this video and would like to learn more, we would love to send you a sample and answer any questions you might have. Just visit our website or be sure to give us a call.